So, it's finally arrived. The Warhammer 3 trailer. If you haven't seen it in full yet, go watch it and come back to this video. Take it in, in all of its glory, before you listen to me ramble on over the top of it. We're just going to go through the trailer and say what we see. Many of you will probably know a lot of this stuff already, but if you don't know what you're seeing, allow me to enlighten you with the knowledge I have. If I miss anything, by all means, drop a comment and let me know what you see. First of all, we see some bodies in very Slav Rus hats, which can only mean one thing, surely. It's Kislevites. My child. We then see a hooded figure walking towards what looks like a war camp tent with these gnarly looking guards outside with their icy weapons. Some kind of ice glaive perhaps, maybe a unit that we might see. Perhaps some kind of hero bodyguard unit or maybe a full unit of them. There is so much to tell you. That I have run out of time. The sacrifice I made was not enough. This brings us to the Kislev leader, Sarina Katarin Boka. Looking a little bit sad and also being told by this narrated voice, I guess the letter that she's reading, that somebody hasn't made enough sacrifice somehow. Maybe that's a hint of what the campaign mechanics might be. We have to make sacrifices to do something. Not sure. The dark gods still feed on our transgressions. And then we start to see them. I don't think this abomination needs any introduction. It is, of course, Nurgle, though, our overlord of 2020, looking quite graphically beautiful despite the maggot mouth he's got going on. Corruption. Obsession. Then we see the Sex King Slanesh. Tzonka to Chinche to Zinchi. A chonky? Something like that. Zinch? I don't know. Deceit. Rage. And of course, Big Daddy Corn. So the Chaos Gods, safe to say they're confirmed in some kind of fashion for Warhammer 3. Oh, Scheiße. You must face these demons. We must face these demons, apparently, whether that means we'll actually fight them in some form on the battlefield or whether they'll just be kind of figures in the sky and we'll just be fighting their armies. We shall see. But the Sarina looking very cool here. Icy weapons, icy crown, icy magic we're going to get, hopefully. And of course, those two guards again. And then we start to see some units of the army, some bowmen at the sides, and then this big guy who might be some kind of hero perhaps, or maybe a budget generic Kislev lord, or maybe he's some kind of actual Kislev character, I'm not sure. <laughs> it's goddamn bear cavalry. I didn't mean that to sound like Santa, I know the polar bears and all, but... Yes, bear cav confirmed, these are going to be freaking awesome, some big heavy cav, they're no doubt going to hit hard, and I'm sure be absolutely wonderful. Then we see what might be Griffon Riders, big heavy lance cavalry, which is going to be a big part of Kislev's game, the cavalry. So we can expect that to be one of their faction strengths. <laughs> then we get our first look at some chaos units, potentially, maybe corn units, these ones. Blood crushers, big heavy massive cav, as you can see, with some big chunky dudes on them. We can notice that there's two weapon types going on here. We've got an axe and shield, and then some kind of spear and shield. So maybe there's going to be two different kinds, an anti-large one. And an anti-infantry one, perhaps? And we can only assume that the strategist for this battle was the same one that commanded the Battle of Winterfell, sending in the cab first by itself. Could be a little piss take from CA. I thought it was funny either way. So paying attention to the Kislev boys here, looking at the guy on the right, he's got a big old hammer, he's swinging overhead, he's got lots of armor on, so it could be a heavy anti-infantry unit. And the guy on the left has a sword and shield, so he could be more of kind of a holding unit, defensive unit, also pretty heavy, so maybe a couple of elite troops we're looking at there. And then some of the Chaos Infantry blood letters, pretty freaky looking dudes. Another corn unit there, I'm not sure if they're kind of a cheap chaffy unit or generally one of the better units, anyone that knows tabletop can probably tell us. And we see Hulk Hogan's been killed. Yeah. 
And then we got a big boy, some kind of greater chaos demon, a bloodthirster perhaps. He's going to be a big boy to deal with. I'm not, I mean, looking at the scale of him here, he looks like he's going to be absolutely huge, much bigger than anything we've seen in Total War Warhammer so far. We've also got the Serena whipping up some ice magic, so we're definitely going to get a new lore of ice, which will be cool. So I'm not sure how the hell you're going to fight something like that with normal, like, can you imagine Empire Spearmen trying to take that on? They're not going to last very long. Not sure how that's going to work. Maybe they're not as big as they're looking here. Maybe they're more like Saigor sized, maybe a little bit bigger. So that would be a little more manageable. Conquer your demons, it says. Obviously, we're going to be taking on the Chaos Gods in some form, but how we conquer them? Are we going to have to, like, beat them somehow? Are we going to have to beat them one by one? Are we going to have to beat them all? Don't know. I don't really know what to expect from campaign mechanics for this. It does mention on the Steam page about crossing over to their realm, though. So it seems like we're going to be leaving the old world and everything and going to some kind of demon realm to actually fight the Chaos in their world in some fashion. So that could be pretty crazy. We then see this hooded figure again, having a bit of a nosy around Sarina Catherine's tent, and we notice the map which says Grand Cathay, first of all, that Cathay will be a faction in Warhammer 3. And if you don't know, they're the kind of Chinese-themed faction, so that'll be cool. We also notice the Jade Dragon, the little green statue, perhaps a little sign of the type of things they may have, and also a letter from Catherine to Yuri, whoever that might be, and it seems that she's given him some kind of perilous task that he's got to perform. And it mentions an outpost and demons. So maybe he's making an outpost to go into the Chaos Realms. But if you want to read the letter, there are a few parts where you can freeze it in different places. And you can read most of that letter. And then plot twist, we see me in 20 years with a wry smile on my face. Chuffed that Warhammer 3 was so good. But in all seriousness, this guy could be related to something it says on the Steam page. Where it reads, the world stands on a precipice. A single push will plunge it into cataclysm. And there is one who schemes to achieve just that. An ancient figure who desires nothing less than to wield supreme power, but to succeed, he will need a champion. Is this guy the one who is scheming? Judging by the fact that he's looking around her tent and has got this cheeky smile on his face, I think he could be the one. We'll see though. We'll see. And it's coming this year. So wonderful, wonderful news all round. I, for one, am very, very excited, as I'm sure many of you are. I really look forward to seeing how Kislev turns out as an army and what they do with the Chaos Lords and Cathay as well, how that's going to work. And then, of course, if there's going to be a DLC faction, apparently there is going to be some kind of early adopter bonus if you pre-order, so not sure what that is yet. They haven't announced it. But yeah, lots of exciting stuff coming for Total War Warhammer. I hope you've enjoyed this. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the future.